And welcome back here to Open. Darren Jaime here with you as we continue to bring you the news, the information, the things that you need to know. Of course, we're not in studio, but we are coming virtually. Glad to bring you uh, much needed information and content for such a time as this, as information is key in really communicating with Bronxites and New Yorkers to let them know how we're navigating through this whole COVID-19 thing. One of the tragedies in COVID-19 is that of the lives lost, thousands of lives lost here in New York City, and the questions continue to mount. Funeral directors, burials, and we also know about Heart Island, uh, an island that has been home now to many burials for those who are victims of COVID-19. Here to share a little bit more with us about the burial process, how families are doing, um, and also what happens in that time of death and some of the assistance that's available is a very special guest of ours. We're pleased to be joined by Melinda Hunt, who's the director for the Heart Island Project. And we thank you so much for uh, joining us, Melinda. Thank you for having me. Uh, very important. And uh, thank you for the great work that you do. We're getting into it right now. But uh, for people who don't know a little bit about the Heart Island Project, please share with us. The Heart Island Project is a public charity that assists people in getting information about the burials on Heart Island and also gaining access to visit grave sites of their loved ones and friends. Yeah, and when we talk about that, we're talking about people who've been affected by COVID-19. Now, traditionally, uh, before that, Heart Island served a different purpose. And uh, now it seems as though with COVID-19 and the rapid amount of deaths, they're, they're using Heart Island as that place to really put uh, people's loved ones. Uh, talk about what's going on now on Heart Island as opposed to what used to be before. Well, in fact, I don't think it's a lot different than before. New York City has had quite a number of epidemics since Heart Island burials began in 1869. The system of burials that is used on Heart Island was developed during the American Civil War to bury Union soldiers on battlefields such that they could be disinterred and either returned to their families or buried in national cemeteries. So it has a historic relationship to, uh, to African Americans and to people in New York City who, for whatever reason, have not did not retain a funeral director. So if your family is low income and uh, lots of people are unemployed today uh, and you can't afford a funeral director, then the city is required to provide a decent burial for all unclaimed bodies. And this system of burials, it looks terrible in the videos, but in fact, I've been working um, on Heart Island uh, to monitor these burials for almost 30 years now. It'll be 30 years in 2021. And when I look at the, the current video, I can see a very well-organized system of burials where each body is placed within a plot. There are 150 bodies in each plot, but the city does know exactly where every body is and each body is handled as an individual. So I think there's no reason to fear a city burial. And I also think that more than ever, this is going to be the choice for most New Yorkers. And so it's up to us to make sure that this cemetery becomes a beautiful parkland. It has already been transferred to parks. Um, prisoners used to conduct the burials that ended on April 3rd. A hundred, for 150 years, the, the city has used prison inmates to bury the unclaimed dead, and that is over. We're done with that. Mm -hmm. And I think it makes it a lot better for people to know that the city has, pri has hired private contractors, just as all the other cemeteries in New York City use private contractors to actually uh, inter the dead. So... Can, can you? I, I want to just cut in here because you, you you mentioned something that seems a, a point of interest for me. When you said that there's a possibility that this will be the way of choice for many New Yorkers possibly going forward, can you elaborate on why you think so? Well, uh, before this all started, the least expensive 
even cremation, direct cremation with no ceremony and nothing was $1,700, $1,800 in the city. Uh, the private cemeteries, burials start at $20,000 or something like that. So maybe you planned ahead and you've got a private plot at, at Woodlawn or Greenwood or St. Raymond's. Uh, but you have to, in order to get your loved one from wherever they died into that plot that you purchased, you have to have a licensed funeral director. And the funeral directors are all overwhelmed and uh, unable to take take bodies from the morgue, pick them up at the morgue, and uh, they're not having any kind of gatherings or funerals because of social distancing. And the crematoriums are all backed up. I've heard that, that you can't get a cremation until the middle of May now. And the medical examiner is uh, in, entitled by law to bury any body that is not collect within seven days. The mayor has extended that to 15 days. But essentially, if, if you don't have a funeral director that uh, is really dedicated to your family and that kind of a connection, you're not going to get... Um, you're not going to get a uh, burial other than on Hart Island. And in my opinion, uh, Hart Island, I've been going there since 1991 during the AIDS epidemic. That's how I started going there. Uh, it's much better than it was in that they've ended inmates conducting these burials. And it's actually a more orderly system of burials than what you're seeing happening at funeral uh, at funeral homes at this point, so so I don't but think admit, people should be but afraid. But admit, uh -huh. No, I, and I and I get not being afraid. I think admittedly there's some you know there's some there's some I guess there's some emotion attached to. I think when you come to the place of disinterment, right, because you've got a family member that may be put there. We know that there's you know there's 14 days that you have, uh, and, and that whole thing of of going through that, uh, the emotional, the psychological, oh, terrible. Thing. So. Oh, terrible. Yeah. And also not getting to say goodbye to your relative if they're in a hospital, not not being able to gather your family, not being able to do anything at this point. And, and maybe having lost your job and being short of food and worried that other members of your family are going to get it because you're all living in the same tiny apartment that you were before this started. I mean, it's just a horrible situation for families. So... The only, the, it's going to be the only option for many, many, many people. Uh, so you're not alone if you can't find a funeral director at this point and you don't have any other options than to agree to a city burial. But the, the flip side of that is that the city does know where everybody is on Hart Island and, and later on you'll be able to request a disinterment if you didn't agree to a city burial. The trouble is, is that if there are a lot of disinterments, it's going to take a very, very long time. And in the meantime, the Parks Department has taken over the management of Hart Island, and it's already uh, pre-approved as a National Historic Site. And I think there's, a, there's an opportunity for it to be uh, a very good place to be buried for people. So it's, it may yeah. not be your, your first choice, but but it's it's a very orderly system of burials that the city has capacity and they manage these burials quite quite well at this point. So that's that's just yeah. my limited experience. Well, Melinda, experience. Mark, thank you. I mean, it's a hard decision. It's hard work that goes on invested into this. Um, thank you for the work that you're doing in a very sensitive and delicate way. Uh, there's a lot to navigate through this. For families, of course, we understand that there's some great challenges. Uh, we put the information up at the bottom of the screen, of course, for people to be able to get connected. If you do need assistance in finding uh, burials and you've got limited resources, of course, want you to get a chance to reach out to Melinda uh, as she continues to do great work with the Heart Island Project. Melinda Hunt, thank you so much for sharing with us here on Open. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me.